Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today I'm talking about the four different types of sports analytics projects that you can do. I made a previous video about how to break into the sports analytics industry that is linked above, and I recommend watching that after you finish this video here. But in that video, I really stress the importance of sports analytics projects. This is the best way to showcase the value that you can provide to an organization. And if you put these out on the internet, there's a chance that people will actually be reaching out to you about potential work opportunities. From personal experience, sometimes the hardest part about sports analytics projects in general is just getting started. To help you kick these off, I figured I would loosely break down the four different types of projects that are out there. These four different types of projects should give you a good idea about the destination that you want to reach. And from there, you can backtrack the different types of questions and the analysis techniques that are necessary to complete this. I also have a video about the types of sports analytics jobs that are out there that is also linked above. This should give you an idea about the type of projects that you should really focus on based on the type of role that you want. So I would also consider watching that after you finish this video here. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more content at the intersection of data science and sports analytics, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you'll be alerted when I post my next weekly video. So the first type of sports analytics project is about projecting outcomes. So you either want to understand how a player or a team will perform over the course of a season or over the course of a game. Most of these applications are generally most valuable to sports gambling or fantasy sports, but they also can have unique value to teams. An example of this would be if you were trying to calculate the spread for each game over the course of a basketball season. If you could do this very accurately, you'd be able to bet on these outcomes. The next type of sports analytics project is about valuing players or teams. Now, this can be somewhat related to the first project type, but this is generally more focused on how many wins a player will create or how much value a player will add to a team. Many organizations want to understand if they should draft a certain player or if they should trade for a certain player, and this type of analysis can be extremely valuable there. Trying to understand how the attributes of players impact performance can be absolutely instrumental to sports teams. An example would be looking at the physical data of running backs at the combine. You know, trying to understand if their hand size, for example, was correlated to how often they fumbled the football. This could have tremendous impacts on which players teams draft. The third type of project is generally focused on identifying areas of improvement for coaches or for players. That's either changing the way that plays are called, when to make a timeout call or something like that, or changing the ways that a player practices so that they have a larger impact in the game. Sometimes the numbers reveal things that the players and the coaches don't actually see. And so this data can help them optimize their decision making or really target how they prepare for games in a different way. An example of this would be the increase in value of on-base percentage over time in baseball. You know, previously, before the, the Billy Bean, the Moneyball area, it wasn't looked at overly important, but they've determined that that's actually one of the most important things is how often they get on base. This has changed the amount of times that coaches actually call bunt plays, and it has also changed for a lot of players how many pitches they take. On an individual player level, pitchers might change what pitches they actually throw. They might find that their curveball is not very effective, and if they just only threw sliders instead, they would strike out more batters or, you know, decrease the probability that other teams get hits or score runs off of them. These types of projects generally have very actionable outcomes for teams. They can in some way shave off runs from the other team or help your team to score a little bit more. Something as simple as when a timeout should be called or when a play should be reviewed can impact a couple games over the course of the season. The final type of project is focused on understanding the sports that we love further. Now, a lot of the, the different sports that are out there have drastically changed over time, and it adds context to the fans, to, to a general viewer, if we see those changes through data. A lot of these changes actually have large implications on the game itself and the way it's played, and 
there's a very interesting historical and storytelling element of these types of projects. The first one that comes to mind is a book called Sprawl Ball by Kirk Goldsberry. He talks about how the three-point line has changed the way that basketball has played in the last 10 years or so. As teams wise up to data, they start taking more three-point shots and significantly less mid-range shots. And that does have implications on you know, how teams play offense, how teams play defense, but it's also very interesting from a fan perspective because it changes how we view the game. It changes the actual, you know, the types of shots that are being taken in games. And that is either, you know, that can either be a good thing or a bad thing for the fan experience. Another example of this would be a project that one of my friends, Brennan, recently did. This is linked in the description below and it's on our Playing Numbers website. He clustered players based on the types of plays that they're a part of and grafted over time. We can see the new types of players based on these clusters and we can also see how these players have changed throughout their careers. This can give the casual viewer insight into the changes of the game and perhaps the impact on how coaches use these players or trade for these players. Hopefully this video helps you get started with some of these projects, helps you frame the questions that you're asking about these sports a little bit better. If you want some more resources on sports analytics, you can go to my website playingnumbers.com. We have data, we have some how-to tutorials there as well, and that's a great place to, to learn about this field. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck on your sports analytics journey.